I think the key to delivering a successful HR programme is very much uh, aligned to the things that are key to delivering a successful project. And there's a very good model that you can use to do this, and it's focus, plan, do, review. As a nation, we tend to just rush off to want to do the do, 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 never, never focus, never review things and never take the learning out of it. So what I'd advocate is, is a portion of time spent actually plan, focusing on what the goals uh, at the end are. And we may pick this, this up in, in, in later questions. It's absolutely essential that there's some point you know you want to get to and that everybody understands that point because there do come points in the life cycle of a project where you get into the pits of depression about it and think you're never going to get there and being able to continue to look to that end point is just so important in terms of the motivation. So we do focus, we then do planning. Planning is different from focusing. Focusing is about setting the end point, setting the vision for the thing, but the planning is about the nitty gritty. It's the point at where if you've got an HR project for example, you have to have, often have to communicate with staff and you might have to send 600 letters out. And it's during the planning that you have to do the awful stuff about, you know, 600 letters at three pages each is 20 seconds a letter, you know, and you realise you haven't got the printing capacity. It's all that sort of really detailed stuff to go through. And knowing that you've done that will give the stakeholders confidence in it as well. You then do the, the, the doing, the actual getting it done, and that's the bit where you have to go through, you have to check yourself against your milestones, you have to make sure that you're still on target, build in the flexibility to change along the way if you want to. And then I think a crucial stage that's missing in many HR projects in particular is the review. There is always a massive amount you can learn from a project. And I think often what we don't do as HR professionals is, is to look back over the project and say, well, you know, what did we set out to do? What were the tools and techniques we used to do it? What resources did we consume? What results did we get? Did we do it? And importantly, what can we do for the next project? And one of the reasons that, that I particularly emphasise this is I'd like to advocate that everyone that's involved in a project does an archive of the project at the end. You would be amazed how many companies I've turned up in to do a particular project and someone has said, uh, yeah, Bill, this is, this is what we want to achieve. And when I go around during the, 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 the initial stages of trying to find out you know, where we are, what the company's done before, all that sort of stuff, people will often say, yeah, do you know, it's interesting, we, we did that 10 years ago. And you say, great, where's, where's all the paperwork and the documentation? And, and they say, oh, I don't know, I think, the, I, th I think the bloke that came in took it with him or something like that. So what I would advocate is the focus, plan, do review, and in the review, build an archive at the end. I think the challenges are easiest looked at in terms of who posed those challenges. In the first instance, change is difficult for everybody, and I think you have to accept that. Unless you're giving people more money, and even under those circumstances, sometimes they'll resist it. A change is tough. A change is tough for people at work, and they find it tough, and they'll often resist it. So you have the, in, in an HR project, the employees themselves may find it very difficult. It may be that they stand to lose their jobs. It may be that they stand to uh, have a different job to the one they had before, or a different way of doing things. And that's difficult for people. So I think dealing with that can be very difficult. I think the key thing with stakeholders is to absolutely understand what they want and to understand uh, the nature of their investment in the project. So in that focus and planning stage, it's very important to, to talk to the stakeholders, to meet the stakeholders, not, not to just take as read any statements that you've been given or anything like that. I think you really do need to meet them and understand, yeah, this this is X or this you know, X can be an individual or group and, and this is this is where they are, this is where they'd like to be, this is why they do or don't support the project, these are the resources they're prepared to commit to it, this is and and give yourself an idea of the pain that they're prepared to go through. It's very sensible to spend a lot of time with them at the beginning of a project, understanding how they'd like to be communicated with. And if I could illustrate that, I've worked, I've been fortunate enough during my interim career to work for the same people three or four times in some instances. And those people, when, when I go through the, bit at the beginning of a project saying, how would you like to communicate? They'll say, Bill, just, just give me a call on a Friday afternoon or give me a call if it looks like there's a problem. People that perhaps meet you for the first time uh, will, will want a lot more detail uh, and I think it's really key to understand how they would like that detail. So some organisations, for example, will be using a full-blown Prince 2 methodology and they'll say, well, you know, the project director will want these reports done at these, these specific times and they genuinely must be done 
never ever miss that. Other folk will have their in-house project management systems. So I think there's, there's communicating with the stakeholders through the formal means and then there's establishing your lines of communication to the stakeholders through the informal means as well. And it's really something that you should never skimp on. That whole idea of communicating with them in a way that suits them is really, really important to managing them properly. I think sometimes there's a paradox. Uh, when, you, when you're parachuted into an organisation to deliver something, often it's because they don't have an in-house resource to do it, though they could redeploy other resources. And one of the reasons that people will often bring an outsider in is for the focus on something. And I think that interim managers and project managers uh, are often inclined to view the world as a giant to-do list. Uh, and to just see things as you know, stuff that's got to be processed, stuff that's got to be done, stuff that's got to be delivered, because you have a limited life in that organisation. And I think sometimes we tend to have perhaps a focus on, on achieving the milestones and the, the, the deadlines, perhaps sometimes at the expense of, of relationships. And I think I have to continually tell myself you know, that the, it is more than a project to the people that work there, it is their livelihood and it's, it's important to them in a dimension that is perhaps not to me. So, so to answer your question, I think one of the things that, that I would probably concentrate more on and indeed try with most projects is, is to not forget that it's not just a giant to-do list, it's an important thing for, for the people that work there. I think for me, the, the question I would throw open to the group would be to, re, if, just for a moment, to revert back to my generalist HR background. And I used to be the, the head of HR at the Jubilee Northern and Piccadilly Lines in London Underground. A fairly substantial sort of organisation. And it was about the time when we were painting out the sign personnel on the doors and painting on HR. And my view is that since then we as a profession have, have perhaps lost our way a little. Because when I go into various organisations, what the employing managers say to me is, you know, I used to really like it when someone from personnel used to come around and help me do recruitment or help me deal with difficult staff or help me with this, 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 this and this. Uh, and yet the HR professionals I meet continually say, oh, I'm far too important to do that, I can only do strategy now. And I think somehow we've, we've fallen between those two stools and I think there is something about Re redefining quite what we're there for. We're not there to do the manager's job, but equally well, I think a lot of managers aren't getting from, from HR departments the things that they used to value from their personnel departments. So I guess my thing to the group would be, how do we, how do we square that circle? What's the new model that we might like to look at?